another aspect that government the results of molecular dynamic simulation is the treatment on long range interaction. So if you think about non bonded interaction that include both Lennard Jones interaction and electrostatic interaction, those interactions are always calculated between pair of atoms and usually are calculated over every pair of atoms in the system except atoms that are bond to each other or separated by two or three bonds depends on the first field. So we can imagine that if we have in a system around n number of atoms we have to calculate n power 2 interaction and those calculation is one of the most time consuming calculation that we have in the simulation. It takes almost 90 percent of the computational time. But we know also that both those two uh, potential, both Lennard Jones potential and Coulomb contention are decaying very fast with the distance. So one solution that was thought was to cut those potential such a way that we save computational time. So the potential are usually cut at one point that is a cutoff and so from a cutoff value the Lennard Jones parameter are not anymore calculated and also the Coulomb interaction are not anymore calculated. This uh, cutoff value now it's strictly related with the type of force field that we are using. So when you set your simulation parameter for this value you have to look what is used during the parameterization of the force field that you are using. What happens after the cutoff? So after the cutoff, we have some, we don't, we know that we don't want to miss completely what happens after the cutoff. We still want to account for the interaction coming from the part after the cutoff, for distant larger than the cutoff. So the solution that we are using can be particle, me, uh, particle mesh equal or reaction field. Also for this option, you have to look on the force field that you are using and use the same setting that the force field is parameterized on. So those parameters cannot be arbitrary. They have to always to be linked to the force field that you are using. You cannot reduce the cutoff just because you want your simulation to go faster because then you will affect the results and you might not have any more reliable results. Boundary condition. So when we do an experiment, usually the experiment is in a, in a baker, and this baker is usually made of glass. But we say that we have also an avocado number of molecules, so that means that we have 10 to the power 23 molecules. So few of those molecules are in contact with the border. When we are simulating a molecule and we put it in a box, then the molecule automatically will, and this will have hard wall. That means that the molecule immediately will interact with the hard wall. So all its property will be affected by the interaction, not only with maybe the water that is around of the solvent, but also with the wall of the box. And this we will don't want because then will affect our results. And there will be a, an environment very different from the molecule inside and baker in the experiment. So we use boundary condition, in particular our box that is in the picture is the central one in red is actually surrounded by 26 imaging of himself. What does it mean? That it means that if the gray particle go out on the right side of the box, it come in on the left side. It's important and so, and we always account for all those interactions. So it's also interacting with the other particle that in, are close by. It doesn't matter which side of the box. How we define our box? We have different way to define our box. The most standard one is to use a cubi rectangular box. But uh, the limitation of the Kubier tangled dots that can have some corner of the box 
and they are very far away from our globular protein. Most of the protein, macromolecular globular. So usually we think about it's better to fit in a sort of spherical box. So what means, what is the problem if we use a, a cubic box? We might have too much solvent to account, so too much interaction to calculate that will slow down our, our calculation without providing extra information. So we have in Gromox have been developed different type of box that can that help to reduce the volume of the box compared to the cubic one. So we have the hexanolal one that can be used for the membrane simulation or for more globular protein we, one can use to create the dodecahedric orthorhombic dodecahedric. For the hexanolal box we have a reduction of 87% of the cubic volume while for the other two, we have a reduction of 77 or 71. And when you build the box, you always have to take care that the distance between your globular molecule and its following image is large enough that they don't see each other. other otherwise, you have an effect. If your protein seen your protein, it means that uh, that might affect and bias your results. So it's important that the distance between the protein and the edge of the box should be at least larger than twice the cutoff. Sorry, larger. So it's important that the distance between the, your global protein and the edge of the box is larger than half of the cutoff. Integration time step. The integration time step determines how much time can be simulated. If you have a small time step, you simulate actually a shorter time. If your, your time step is five times larger, you at the end end up with the same time of computational time to simulate five time longer simulation. This time step is very critical. So if you have two small time step, it's always correct, it's not wrong, but something, the events will never happen. So it will take longer and longer. And we are always fight with the time. If it's too large, the time step, you will get instability. So you will get problem in your results. So we have to have an appropriate time step. So if we consider a flexible, so if we consider the vibration, the bond vibration, and the rotation, the torsion, and translation, all these component type of motion, we probably need to use a, a time step of one femtoseconds. If, if we want to only to simulate torsion, rotation, and translation, then we go up to two femtoseconds, and when we consider only translation and rotation, we go up to five femtoseconds. There is a strict relation between the time step and the shape of the potential. When we have a narrow, a very narrow potential, we need a smaller time step. We, if we have a more shallow potential, then we can use larger time step. And that is also the reason why usually coarse grain model has a more shallow potential. And so then you can use larger time step in cross grain models than in atomistic model. There is so we can say that the time step is limited by fast motion. So the vibration in this sky, the bond vibration, and of course the light atom vibrate faster than heavy atom. And uh, one useful trick to overcome this is to use uh, constrain algorithm that constrain your bond. And in Gromax, we have links, peelings, and shake that can be used. Also the setting for, uh, for the constraint of the bonds, you can look for this setting also to how your force field, the force field that you are using is parameterized. The other faster motion are the angle involving hydrogen and the rotation of the methyl amine group. And so there is also an option to remove them. Then you can go up to five femtoseconds, and that means to use virtual 
interaction sites. So you set a virtual interaction site, you model the position of the atoms around those virtual interaction sites, you calculate the force real on the position of the atom that you have modeled, and then you redistribute those force on the program for you, redistribute the, this force on the virtual size, and then they use only the virtual size position for the integration. Another aspect that governs your outcome of your simulation is the temperature pressure. Experiments are always performed in a particular setting. These are the most common setting that we can, we can see in the physical and the chemical uh, experiment, also in the biophysics. And uh, in biophysics and biochemistry, most of the experiments we can say are performed in MPT ensemble. That means constant number of particles, constant pressure, and constant temperature. Few, we have few cases of NPT ensemble, so constant number of particles, constant volume, constant temperature. But from here, it's clear that when we, I want to reproduce an experiment or get some value, so I have to get to simulate in a particular condition of a particular pressure or particular temperature. So you need to control from the simulation point of view the pressure and the temperature. How we do that? So we have different way to do that. So I will go through and I will tell you how the calculation, I will not go in details on the all different type of barostat that are usually used to control the pressure thermostat that are usually control the temperature available in Gromax. I will just give you the, the main idea behind this. Temperature and simulation are usually calculated from the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is given by the velocity acting on all the particles, the mass of all the particles. And then there is a relation between the kinetic energy and the number of degree of freedom of the system, the temperature, and the temperature of the system. So from this formula, you can see that if we know the kinetic energy, we can calculate the temperature, knowing that Kb is the Boltzmann constant. So one, the way you mainly use to control, velocity, to control the temperature in simulation is by modifying or scaling velocity of the particle in the system. So if I scale all the velocity, I, will, I can change, I can affect the temperature. Pressure and simulation are calculated in a different way. So from the Ideal gas theory, we know that there is a relation between the pressure of the system, the volume of the gas, the number of particles, and the temperature. For a real system, because we are not simulating ideal gas, for a real system, this expression, to this expression we add a second term. And this term is the virial, describing the contribution due to the force acting on the particle and the position of the particle. So that means... Uh, that we have a relation between the pressure of the system, the volume of the system, the temperature of the virial. So one way in which we control the temperature in molecular simulation is by scaling the position of the molecules. In this way, we scale the volume of our box. There might be some objection, like for example, you might want to simulate uh, a crystal cell. But usually, we, when we set a simulation, we want to simulate our macromolecule in an environment that is close enough to a physiological environment, to the setting, to the environment that the molecule has in the in vitro experiment, or sometimes also in the cellular environment. That means that we have to add to our mo macromolecule the solvent, ion with the correct concentration. If it's a membrane protein, we might add also a membrane mimic as a bilayer, a lipid bilayer, and other atoms of mo other molecules that may be important part of the environment. And when we choose those, the solvent model, the ion model, the lipid molecule, 
or whatever other molecules models, we have always to do it in line with, with the model that we use to describe the macromolecules. So in line with the first field in use for the macromolecule. That means that it should be all compatible. And that is will be the all box that you will see, your simulated box. But we still need, for the macromolecule in particular, we need a starting configuration, but also maybe for the solvent, we also need a starting configuration. So for the macromolecule, usually the starting configuration comes from experimental data from structural biology. So from X-ray crystallography, NMR, spectroscopy or cryo-electron microscopy. They can also come from self-built three-dimensional model, for example, for a modeling modeling or docking model. In the case of solvent, usually we have pre-built solvent box. So a, box, a small box of solvent has been pre-equilibrated and then is used to fill up the larger box around the macromolecules. All the structure for macromolecule usually can be downloaded from the PDB databank and uh, from uh, a file format that is called PDB that can be then processed directly from Ingromats. But there might be possible issue in, in this structure. So first things I always suggest to everybody, when you download a PDB structure from the database, visualize it immediately because then it can allow you with your eye, you can understand better how, you, how is the molecule and where is might be some issue that are not so easy to spot in other cases. Because one has to keep in mind that not all the atoms are always available in the experimental structure. Sometimes, for example, flexible loop might be missing. Sometimes those loops are model add to the structure, sometimes not. But the important aspect for someone doing simulation that there are no raw data on those because you want to know which data of your structure come from a sort of raw data. The position of the hydrogen. Most of the techniques, structural biology techniques, no, do not provide position of hydrogen. So most of the hydrogen that we see in, uh, in the deposit structure are model, except, yeah, are coming from a sort of refinement model. So that make us, maybe we want to regenerate the position of those atoms. Also, some of those, since they are already model, the one that we found in the structure, they might also be, when you model these atoms, you have to decide which pH is your structure. So at P, you can have a pH 7 in a way to give the protonation states correct for each residue if you are a protein, for example. And, but it could be that in some particular, for example, in a pocket, in a protein pocket, you might have an effect of PK shift. So uh, um, side change that usually is the protonate and that pH might be protonate or other way around. So also this has to be think about. And also one main thing is to account for possible tautomeric states. Tautomeric states are very difficult to, to detect experimentally. But and for the protein, we have only one case that is the histidine that have two, can have two tautomeric states. But uh, in a structure like RNA, for example, it might be occurring more frequently. So some thought has to be spent there when you set your simulation. The position, the water position. So maybe in the structure there are some kinetic trapper water. Maybe those those things that are built as a water, since if the structure in particular is a little old, might be not water, but maybe ion. Also, you have to pay attention that sometimes extra molecules are add to in the PD, are present in the PDB, and those mo molecules are there just to allow the resolution and the the, the detection of the structure. So that I mean cofactor, ligand, sulfatan, for example. Or also you have to pay attention to special conditions that have promoted observation of spinter structure like pressure, temperature. So that are all aspects that you have to think about before setting your system and just using the structure that you get for the PDB. So one other useful 
tips is to read carefully the article from which the structure comes from. So we have now the initial coordinate, but we would like also to have initial velocity. We might want to have. So if all the velocity at time zero at zero means that your system starts at temperature zero, since we know that it's the relation between the kinetic energy and the temperature. So one way to generate initial velocity is uh, to generate a velocity and uh, distribute them in a random way on all the atoms, such a way that we start with the system at the correct temperature. Maybe the distribution is not correct, but the temperature is correct. In other case, if you have a previous run, you can take all this information from the previous run. So, molecular simulation. So we say that we need, we have a starting structure usually, coming from an experiment or whatever, from a PDB structure most of the time, we have to choose it to assign a functional form. One also a good tips to know for this to define a functional form is to look how, how much people are using that special functional form. More people are using a force field. It means that more people as indirectly check the force field. So you can trust more the force field for that specific property. It's more people as use the force field in particular for that specific property. Then we have to add the simulation condition, that I mean temperature, pressure, then also to put our molecule in the correct environment that we want to simulate it. And when everything is ready, we can start molecular dynamic simulation and generate conformation. This ensemble of conformation that at the end we get an ensemble of structure from dot ensemble of structure we can extract thermodynamic property, structural property, kinetic property, and dynamic property. Now I want to give you an overview of the file, the extension of the file that are used in Gromax. So structural files are mainly labeled as GROW file, while a file containing information of the potential of the energy function, the potential form, are called topology file, the extension is top, and file containing the parameter for the simulation are MDP file. And these three files are the, the input, the basis input for the simulation protocol. Then when you run a simulation, after you run a simulation, you get an output. And this output is characterized mainly from three main important uh, file, that uh, file collecting all the trajectory, that is called uh, XTC file, a trajectory file containing all the structure that you have generated, and are saved according to the frequency that you have set in the MDP parameter, because in, an, in the simulation parameter you set also the frequency for which you want to save your trajectory, your energy, and all other information. Why we need this? Because we cannot save every step, since nowadays we will run in the order of microseconds and we cannot save every two femtosecond file become too large. So we have also an energy file where we are store all the energy, ADR file, and we have also a log file. This, and then we also get a last step as a grow file, last snapshot. So this is input-output in the Gromas thought with the correct extension. More details on this you will see in the tutorial after the lecture. So the first things that we have to set for a simulation, we have to set the system. So the system, we have to choose the initial coordinate. Maybe we visualize the structure, we add missing atom, and we have our first structure. Then after that, we have to generate a topology to associate all the parameter to all the atoms of the macromolecules. Then we will define the box of our system. And then we add the, we add the environment. So first we add the solvent, and then we will add the ions. So of course, when you add the solvent, when you add the ion, all the model for the solvent ions should be consistent with the model for the macromolecules. And in this phase, uh, probably you have also 
if you miss some parameter, you have to generate the missing parameter. At the end, when all these steps are done in this order, we get the starting configuration that we can use for the simulation. Before the data production, we need to relax the, our system in different steps. This is the step that we suggest to do it. So first of all, we will minimize the energy of the system. That means that so to remove, to remove uh, some steric, steric contact to start to relax the system. Then we will run, uh, we suggest to run uh, position restrain uh, calculation to relax the position, so we position restrain the macromolecule, but we relax the position of the solvent and the ion. That is important since the solvent is just coming from a pre-built solvent box, so it doesn't, when the molecule is solvate, the orientation of the solvent is not the most favorable orientation with respect to the macromolecule. And the ion are just other replacing water molecules. So we might have ion too close to the macromolecule that should be never be there. So then it's important to relax the position of those items. Otherwise, we have a deformation at, at your macromolecule from the beginning, and that is very critical. In particular, in system highly charged system where charge play a large role, or in system nuclear acid might be more critical, like RNA and DNA. The other things that we have to get is our system to get the system to temperature to the correct temperature and pressure condition. When all this is done, we go we can go to the last step of simulation, and these simulations are where we release everything and we start really the data production from which which we get an ensemble of conformation from which we can calculate the kinetic property. Each of these steps are performed with a dedicated MDP file. Then we come the things. When you finish the simulation, you can check uh, that uh, your energy is okay, that uh, the distance between the, the imaging with the, the molecule is imaging is large enough. But then I suggest you to visualize your trajectory because with the eye, you can understand better your molecule. And you can also realize which type of property and which type of atom might be, or which kind of interaction might be more interesting to look in it or not. But it is just a personal suggestion. And uh, there are different tools for visualization among us. We must use VMD, and that you will see also in the tutorial after that. I thank you all of you for the attention. And uh, after this talk, we will be a question and session for question. And after that, we will have the tutorial. Thank you. Bye.